Um, can you look at your neighbours? If you know them, fine, give them a hug, say, shake hands, whatever. But if you don't, why not say hello? I've got a reason. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. 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 This is an idea, I don't know. If not, we'll get there. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Up and down, Aris. So down goes on to right. right. Is that chair okay then? Uh, um, just back a bit. Sorry to be a pain. And the water still waters this one. Right, are we finished? How was that? Was it embarrassing? Was it comfortable? Especially if you didn't know somebody. That's like the relationship between enabled archaeology and TDP. Because we get to know each other. We learn. We grow and develop. Whatever it is, whether it's brand new so you say hello. Oh, I can't shake hands. Don't know them. Shake hands. Oh, I've known them 20 years. Big hug. Laugh. Let's all laugh together. Here you can see on the Thames foreshore, this is me. In a note, I better go through what we're doing. Right, I came to Thames Discovery. I wrote a blog in 2013, I think. Why is that here? Wave. All oh, right, <laughs> cheek. Anyway, um, and on it I said, you know, one of the reasons as a disabled student, um, I couldn't get anywhere. I had a distinction in my training, my dig training in my first year. I'd applied for eight placements. It's all free, you know, for them and so on. Only one accepted me at that point, and that was TDP. Nobody else would look at me. I was a piece of dirt, right? Then, suddenly, um, I will go on and say that in a minute. I, I want to tell you our history together, the full support that TDP and as Able Archaeology was created in 2015 on myself, our other groups and TDP, um, what we're going to do with TDP in 2020, um, and also about the field work. Um, we're working with one of four groups, which is you, us, and the future. Okay, I'd applied in the end of two years for 38 placements. I was only accepted in two. Tennis Discovery Program was the first. Everybody else shunned me, and I couldn't understand why. I was getting the grades, I got the experience. I wasn't the best at uni, no, but I wasn't definitely not the worst. Okay, so I filled out the application form and they asked it in there, oh, um, well, do you have a disability? Is there anything you want to talk about? In the first few weeks, the welcome and acceptance as an individual, as a human being, as a student was exceptional. Every time I had any hassle, for instance, I talked to Matt a couple of times, you know, can't get down this darn so. Well then, what about using a rope on the side? And that will come back later. Um, they were aided and discussed, and my choice every time was respected. Every single time, my choice, nobody taking my, my choices away. And I saw all the excellent best practice towards me, which is why I wrote the blog, which I was very shy at that time of doing. Here on the left you see me, the way I dig. Self-coping strategies, me on the right, field work with TDP. Okay, I learned from the foreshore experts. As a student with TDP, my self-confidence grew from being annihilated and basically shunned by many, many placements and many museums, you name it, uh, field work, trainees and so on my self-confidence started to grow. And as a graduate and a postgraduate student in 2015-16, I under started to understand the impact of TDP itself, how they are excellent community and public archaeology rolled into one. They've always only been a phone call away for me. Their support throughout my field work was fantastic. At times I went away crying so grateful because not many accept 
those of us as volunteers, as PhD uh, archaeologists at the top or the bottom. They weren't. They still don't. But I saw excellent practice and approaches towards me. But most of all, what hurts most is when the attitude is, you're incapable, you can't do. Never, never did I see that at GDP. This also builds up a disabled participant or individual and so on. Too many of us don't get that. Right, right. Full support was offered to me when realising that um, I'd created an over archaeology in 2015. I won't go into all the injustices, suicides, etc., etc. But what I will go into is that immediately Elliot contacted me and said, Look, if there's anything, and I think it was Matt phoned me or wrote to me and said, Want to put anything on the website? Be there. So they aided us, they promoted us. And whenever I've needed advice, I've either phoned or and emailed here and again, there and again, and they're also there on Facebook. And the other unspoken support they give of attitudinal acceptance, which so many don't. So I came for both of us together, meaning Enabled Archaeology Foundation, TDP. I should explain one thing. Enabled Archaeology Foundation is for anybody who has any disability or not to understand, become familiar, not frightened of, whether it's bipolar, dance, no limbs at all, or dying. So, what did Nat do? Well, I know she's left, but she still does without even realising. What she does is she gives me confidence. I remember back to when she taught me. I was in a little group one day, it's in my dissertation, there, of her teaching us. Her care, her Create, you know, creative ideas. She actually told me a little story once that they're even thinking with somebody else, not me, of actually hiring a boat to get somebody onto the foreshore. Now, talk about creative. I mean, mm, we'll come back to that. Also, from I've been working for years on a ladder inclusion basis where you can go down to the foreshore in a wheelchair um, at stages and so on. And I hit on a plan. And again, advice. I will be coming to Helen Johnson in um, December, most probably, um, and asking her advice as she has so much experience with blind participants, re the drawing, recording, and planning methods we um, I intend to do. And from all the staff, I've never, ever, ever been told to go away. I've never had any negativity, ever. And for all of us who are disabled or not, volunteer, PhD, -er, excellent a lord in archaeology, it doesn't matter. But now we're together, not as them and us, but as us. Right, together, um, our inclusion methods which we use, which also educates people who have no familiarity and are scared, and there are many, many in archaeology scared of anybody with a disability, especially in mental health issues, which I have too. But um, we will be doing, can I just flick slightly? Right. What we'll be doing in 2020, as long as TDP agree, wherever you are today. Right, right Helen. Right, right. Anyway, um, we will be using some newer inclusion methods we use this year. Um, Reen mental health, which is how to be unpressured, how to be pressured, you know, uh, be less pressured around people, bipolar, whatever it is. I keep mentioning depression, anxiety, I can't have anxiety disorders. Also, we'll be trying out, because of the methods of drawing and recording, and plotting even on the foreshore is different, we'll be trying on new inclusion methods we did this year, which proved to be highly successful fact okay only one participant but gradually we're building that up over the years and trying them out with gdp again with permission slip but not sliding away to slope or not access the ladder will be one that hooks to the edge of here like this comes out and then it although it pulls out and it's a new one that the building um, sites use but we are going to get it, if we have the funding by then, to slip, slide, slip, 
slide so that it's in stages so that wheelchairs can do it. Right, again, we will try that out if the funding's there. And also a ladder tryout if we can. We have 3D tools being printed this coming year for different, two different types, which we will use with TDP. Try it out on the foreshore, those without limbs completely. I have to talk to you at some point about dying children and so on that I've been doing in the past a uh, couple of years as well, um, to include them. And also, what about beach wheelchairs that are used throughout the country and on beaches, wherever you go? We could try trying that out at specific sites. Right, and so it's equipping us, empowering us, and enabling us all together. As you can see, you can see Elliot, Nat, and Helen there. And that's what Enabled Archaeology Foundation is about. The future for us, my respect and my uh, admiration to TDP goes no bounds. There's, that's fact, not fiction. It's a truth, not a lie. The fact is that to be accepted for who we are as excellent, disabled, enabled archaeologists, participants, volunteers, and not to be looked down on is a rarity. It is getting better. I'm not saying there aren't far more groups than there were in the country since 2015. But can I say that TDP is a shining example. As one of four groups, we did it this year with the second one that did accept me, Bamboo Research Project, a training school up in uh, New, no, no, Northumberland. Ha, <laughs> Bamboo, in fact. Uh, um, next year, we're doing it with Breaking Ground Heritage, which is part of Operation Nightingale. No, it's not. It's adjacent to um, the year after 2020 will be with Thames Discovery Program. And what will happen is that once all four years have gone by, I'm in negotiation with the fourth and final year, where my income idea of permanent, long-term, sustainable income for every single archaeological um, community group, maybe not every single, <laughs> Um, nothing is totally proven yet, but by the early signs so far, and when those inclusion methods are put together with the income idea, I, I do believe that TDP will have a great asset. One disabled person, just one, actually being accepted and being done, and hey presto, you've got an income. That's as far as I'll go on telling you that. At TDP, you aren't fobbed off. You're not told that, oh, we've taken down the job or you can't do this or that. They listen, and that's the center of that. Did you hear when Joshua was saying about him going, that, and you, in fact, tell him, going into the community, going to where they are? Hardly anybody does that. That's what we need to do. Go to where people are comfortable. Listen to them. What do they want? What's your wishes? No life choices taken away anymore. We have valuable contributions to make all disabled and enabled archaeologists participants on the foreshore, and TDP know that. That's why my admiration for you is so intense. We're going to make, aha, you don't know this either, we're, we're making how-to films. One of the presenters is a frog, not me, and uh, also an enabled archaeology member um, of the group, and we were making films because what keeps happening is people don't know. They don't know how to be inverted commas around anybody with a disability, especially if it's more severe. So the how-to film shows you the basics. On, one, um, on my AIA page, whoops, all-inclusive archaeology page, before I get to um, find or whatever, um, you will find there is one film that says how to, from many years ago, without arms and legs, how you can dig. Um, and with that, and with the trowels that will attach to the body, we'd like to try that out on the foreshore, but again, we have to talk. <laughs> um, yeah, that, they're only going to be three or four minutes long, but with TDP's permission during their time here, there you are, <laughs> um, then that would be great. Just as maybe I've gone too fast, I'm sorry if I have. But I will take, um, what's the word? I will take questions until my time's up, if need be. Um, my hope and 
dream, and this is why the Neighbourhood Archaeology Foundation was founded, was no more inequalities, no more deaths, no more stigma, no more even hatred at times. It's only 10% of archaeology that's like that, wherever you go. It doesn't matter what area, what you're talking about. It's only 10%. 90% of people, once they realise, are for us. I want no more deaths like my participant in 2016. No more. And my hope and dream is that best practice will all be accepted and equal, included with equality. What have I seen at TDP? Exactly that. In the photos, if you can see them, we've been trying out a new method of actually going into, this isn't our method, we've got loads of our own ideas, but this is from Ben and Osgood, who are Operation Nightingale and Breaking Ground Heritage. We adapted it for the training school this year, whereby, incidentally, a week before we actually went, somebody who hadn't been in the trench digging for five years, who's a lecturer, a teacher, actually was able to get into the trench because of this, and we hadn't even got there then. The point is, we've made many discoveries, and 90%, and I mean, we had tried out 10 methods, one didn't really work, nine definitely do work, whether it's to an extent or 100%, that's still to be founded, far more people to be seen. But as you can see from both this one and that one, that it can work and it can be simply done with no cost. And this was a Tower of London foreshore when I was there. And as soon as I can, but you know what it's like when you've got a brand new charity nearly there, to, it's to be still, stroke non-profit. Um, we are still getting there. But also I, I put out a call to TVP, and that is, by the way, happy 10th anniversary, um, birthday, anniversary um, and that is tadpoles working with tadpoles who are dying I've worked with them on Isleworth for sure and they've walked away happy before they die something we never talk about people who want to do that whether adults or children I put that out to you and extenuate it to you for 2020 see what you think and thank you for the honor of being asked to speak.